A warm welcome to all the London lovers and walking enthusiasts out there to another journey on the London Vlogger podcast with me, Stu, where I take you on some of London's most famous and lesser known walking routes to discover the capital's history and sights. If you'd like to read all my walks, they're available at www.londonvlogger.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts or SoundCloud. My journey today will take me to the most northern part of the capital that I've explored as I begin at Gladstone Park and uncover the gem of Dollis Hill House. I'll then discover the Woodfield Park and Brent Reservoir before heading through Silver Jubilee Park and concluding at Fryant Country Park. It's a walk which takes me to woodlands, a reservoir and a country park and sees me stroll through some of North London's most wonderful sights. Located in Dollis Hill, Gladstone Park is 35 hectares of picturesque trees and glorious greenery. The arrival of the Great Central Railway towards the end of the 19th century led to the loss of sports grounds in Neilston, which prompted the public to back a new park in Dollis Hill. The proposed land to be used was part of the Finch family estate, and after local objection was resolved, funds were raised to purchase it for 52000 The funds would come from a variety of councils, including Middlesex County Council, London County Council, Hampstead, Hendon and Wilston. The contract to purchase the house, gardens and estate from Robert Augustus Finch was signed by the council on 9th of August 1899. On the 12th of December 1899, it was agreed to name the park after William Gladstone, the Prime Minister who had died the previous year and who had visited the house for many years. The park was designed by Oliver Robson, the District Council Surveyor. It was decided to leave the northern part of the new park to its original and natural beauty, while devoting the southern section of the park to sports. Robson would also install fencing, a children's playground, seats, stabling, pavilions for football and cricket and a water supply. Interestingly, no paths were created. Instead, these were added once the park was opened as Robson wanted to see how people marked their own pathways. Today, the London Borough of Brent owns the park and is maintained by the Brent Park Service. Some of the park's features include a formal garden, duck pond, varied terrain, woodland and hedgerows. The entire park area, especially the pleasure gardens and pond, really are one of London's hidden gems, and whenever I walk around them basking in their natural splendour, I do think that had I not been a fan of walking around the capital, I never had come across it. Gladstone Park isn't a tourist hotspot, nor is it somewhere that's well known, so unless you visited it before, you'd probably never come across it. That's a great shame, it's one of the main reasons that I love doing my blog and podcast, as I can discover areas such as these. For a moment of peace and quiet, you definitely want to pay it a visit. One of the park's historical landmarks was the Dollis Hill House, which was an early 19th century farmhouse located on the northern boundary of Gladstone Park. The house was built in 1825 by the Finch family when the Dollis Hill area was still rural. In 1881, Lord Tweedmouth's daughter and her husband, Lord Aberdeen, took up residence. They often had Prime Minister William Gladstone to stay as a guest, other guests at the house included Joseph Chamberlain, Lord Rosebery, Lord Randolph Churchill, the father of Winston Churchill. The Aberdeens moved down in 1897 after Lord Aberdeen was appointed Governor General of Canada. The Wilsdon Urban District Council acquired the house and land in 1899. A notable resident of the house was American author Mark Twain, who stayed there in the summer of 1900. The house had opened to the public in 1909 and was used as a hospital during the First World War. In the Second World War, Winston Churchill's war cabinet met there in 1941. From 1974, the house was used for training courses for catering students until it closed in 1989. The house was damaged badly in two separate fires in 1995 and 1996 and remained derelict from then onwards before being demolished in 2012 and landscaped as a stabilised ruin. Despite many campaigns to restore the house to its former glory, 
none have unfortunately come to fruition. The ruins from the house remain near the pleasure grounds to provide a slight glimpse of what it used to look like. Even though the house hasn't been restored, it's lovely to see that a part of it is still there and is a wonderful legacy to a truly beautiful building which has a lot of history attached to it. I'll now leave Gladstone Park and visit my next destination on my walk today, Woodfield Park. Located in Hendon, the park is home to the Brent Reservoir, which is commonly known as the Welsh Harp, and straddles the boundary between the boroughs of Brent and Barnet, and is owned by the Canal and River Trust. The Welsh Harp name comes from the public house, which also had the same name, and stood nearby until the early 1970s. The 68.6 hectare area is a site of special scientific interest, and is home to the Sailing Centre, the Welsh Harp Sailing Club, Wembley Sailing Club, the Sea Cadets and the University of London Sailing Club. The reservoir now holds an estimated 1.6 million metres cubed. The history of the reservoir dates back to 1820, when there wasn't enough water to supply the Grand Union Canal and the Regent's Canal. So having obtained an enabling of Act of Parliament in 1819, the Regent's Canal Company decided to dam the River Brent to create a reservoir and a cut feeder channel from it to an upper part of the Grand Union Canal. The reservoir was constructed by contractor William Hoof between 1834 and 1835, with additional extensions to be completed in December 1837. Having explored many watery wonders on my walks, this is the first time I have visited a reservoir, so it's something else I've managed to tick off my London walking checklist. The surrounding area beside the reservoir is called Woodfield Park and contains a wide variety of birds and also is home to 31 species of butterfly, dragonflies and damselflies as well as foxes, squirrels and bats. I really enjoyed walking through the grass, by the trees and under the branches discovering all the park's little treasures. One of the best sights you'll see when you explore the park is the sun shining through the trees creating a mesmerising light and shadow effect. It's time for me to leave Woodfield Park and Brent Reservoir and make the journey to my final destination on today's walk, Fryant Country Park. To get there, I passed by the lovely Silver Jubilee Park, which was renamed for the Jubilee of King George V in 1935. Fryant Country Park is situated in the north of the London borough of Brent. Like with Brent Reservoir, this is the first time I've walked through a country park, something you don't normally expect in London. While you're walking through the park, you get a glimpse of Wembley Stadium in the distance, which provides a true juxtaposition of the quiet natural park with a loud football stadium. When you stand in the middle of the park and look around, taking in the 360 degree view, all you can see is trees and greenland, which does make it quite surreal and unique to other places in London. When you think of London, what normally comes to mind is landmarks such as Big Ben, The Shard or Buckingham Palace. And even when you think about the nature in the capital, you might think about Hyde Park or perhaps Hampstead Heath. But what makes exploring London so marvellous is you come across unexpected places like Fryant Country Park, which you wouldn't have thought could be in London. Well, that's all from my walk today, which has seen me explore North London's finest natural wonders, from parks to reservoirs and a country park. It has included it all. So if you're ever wandering around North London, seeking some tranquillity, there's plenty to enjoy. If you'd like to get in touch with me to share any spots in London you love or any memories of visiting the capital, you can email me at londonblogger at gmail.com or message me on social media, I'm at London Blogger, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Well thanks for joining me and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts or SoundCloud. Until next time, stay safe and well. I look forward to you joining me on more walking adventures soon.